AGAPA, basically to allow using the GPS camera to find cones around the school. On the cones is a QR code that they scan with their phones. That QR code reveals a question that they need to answer. And if they answer it correctly, they get the next GPS coordinates by the next time. So they're basically revising for their next assessment for being physically active and doing on the go. And to top it off, they're actually walking around with their MP3 players in their pockets, which have podcasts that they have created about all the different key content. So if they do get stuck, they can listen to themselves on their own recordings, and hopefully they can answer the questions accurately enough to move on to the next point. I think you're really enjoying it. Hopefully you turn out right. Lots of grass in Port, as you can see. Um, I think at that stage we didn't have one blade of grass in the entire school, and when I turned up I was thought, what am I doing in this place? Um, but luckily the drought's broken and it looks a bit nicer. But that was a cool way to get the kids moving and revising using QR codes. They helped generate the questions, and I went around and put them around the school on permanent locations. Um, they are on permanent locations now, and they're laminated. I learned that lesson when it rained and they didn't scan. But it is a really cool way to be mobily active um, for any subject. A couple of things to share and we'll wrap, the, wrap it up. But Bluetooth um, is something that I've tried a few times. I set up what's known as a Bluetooth server. Now, Bluetooth is a radio messaging frequency. So you can use it to send pictures and devices and things between phones. Now, Bluetooth servers at bluemagnet.com, uh, you set one up and it runs from a computer and anyone who walks within that vicinity gets pushed to a question or a mobile um, response. So we were doing our school newsletter just as a test. Kids walked past and they got this message on their phone and it was the school newsletter. Um, and in my particular class, we used it to send some images. So the images for that particular class that they needed to respond to were being pushed out automatically to kids on their phones, uh, the school devices and so on. And they were using it to be the prompt for their learning. So. It's a marketing campaign, like I've walked into shopping centres before and been bombarded with these, but the same thing can be used in the educational sense to get messages out. And it was randomly sending messages out to different kids. This is a different dynamic to sort of, um, you know, change the way that we del deliver content. And the last one I want to share with you is mobile streaming. Um, obviously streaming content from a mobile device live, and one of the ways you can do that is via QIK, QIK.com. And it basically turns your phone into a live broadcasting system that you can be anywhere in the world and people can log on to your space and they can watch what's happening. And lucky for me, one day I had a day off in um, Ocean Grove and my kids were still at school. Um, I don't know, not many schools would probably do this, but when we have our parent-teacher interviews, we get a day off in lieu. So that's something that every school does. <laughs> 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 We do, and I got to go to Ocean Grove, made a long weekend of it, and my kids were back at school, and I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to teach outdoor ed live <coughs> from Ocean Grove. So I got um, a friend to, to film the video, and I stood there on the beach and taught about um, carbon the carbon cycle while the kids were in the classroom with the video on their on the, the class computer. And that's made possible by these mobile devices and things that we can now do. So, well, that's the picture of Ocean Grove where it was, um, standing there talking about that. So, I thought to finish off, I'll finish off with this quote here. I think it sort of typifies what we'll be talking about in the whole mobile sense. Human beings started as butterflies and end up in cocoons. I think it's somewhat true. Look at a toddler when they're learning. Um, they're running around crazy. I've got a little uh, nephew and he is, goes berserk, running around the place. Um, leaves a trail of destruction between room to room and goes outside. And then eventually we get them into the classroom and it, in, back in the day it had to be, if you want to do a digital task, it had to be on a desktop computer and it had to be in a room in a location. I think now we've got the capacity to spend less time like that and more time like this with mobile devices so that our classroom can be anywhere in the world. So hopefully you've been able to get a bit of an experience about my view on mobile learning, some ideas, maybe start a little bit of a um, you know, fire in your own mind about what you can use it for. Uh, I thank you for listening in and happy to answer any questions if you do have any. Thank you.